With Pairview, uh, you can basically take data that comes from supercomputer simulation, import that into this app and start playing around with, because mostly it comes in as a block of data or like a mesh with a, a bunch of attributes. And within Paraview, you can then manipulate uh, these attributes and assign what do you want to see? Do you want certain attributes mapped to the color on your mesh? Or do you want to completely recompute certain surfaces or something like that? And uh, within Paraview, you can kind of, as a user, uh, make that decision, do some uh, computation, uh, create a small compute graph, and then that will be evaluated to result in a certain rendering. And now what the connector does is to take the actual rendered result from Paraview and uh, enable the transfer to Omniverse so that all Omniverse enabled applications can actually uh, yeah, work on that data and create a scene around it or even just uh, uh, create a completely different visualization of that data itself within, Par within uh, Omniverse or within Create. And uh, so I don't have any supercomputing data ready, so I'll just start with a very simple uh, example right here, which is our famous uh, wavelet example, um, which is uh, basically just a, a stand-in for the data that would normally come from the server. So I actually create that block right here. As you see, it's just a cube. And in this case, it's just a block of values. And that's the source data with which Paraview normally works. And then on this left side here in the pipeline browser, you can see that the user can kind of build a compute graph out of that. So he can apply certain filters like a contour filter and then see that Paraview creates this mesh surface out of the the block of data by just visualizing the, the, a particular ISO value. And then at that point, it's rendered, and this, what is rendered right here, should then be able to be sent over to Omniverse. So what you do in Paraview to get that running is you check your settings, Omniverse connector, um, what is my Omniverse server, there's an output directory right there, and then when the, all of that is correct, then I open an Omniverse connector view. This is a separate view from what we have here in the beginning. So you, nothing is visible in this particular view yet. So nothing is sent over to the Omniverse yet. And now you can select like, hey, I prepared this pipeline before. I want this contour to be sent over to the Omniverse server at the particular directory that I chose beforehand. And then on the create side, we can actually select our user directory, uh, do a little refresh to see that for every Omniverse view that we create on the Paraview side, it creates a new directory here within my user directory called session whatever number. And you go in there and you can then open full scene Uh, so yeah, either way, you can see that surface right now on the left side within Create. And you could, for example, enable Live Sync on that. And what you can do now within Paraview is just say, oh, I also want a contour at the value 100 and a contour at the value 150. I apply that. And then automatically on the left side, Create will also inherit the geometric changes right there. So, um, so that's the most simple use case there is. And what I want to highlight is again that uh, it's not this this compute graph that's being sent over in USD format to create because create wouldn't have a way to evaluate that. It's the evaluation of this um, this compute graph that happens within Paraview itself, either on this client right now or if you connect to a Paraview server on a completely different machine, then that server would do such an evaluation. And uh, whatever it then generates in terms of visualized uh, data, like meshes and uh, volumes also, uh, that will be sent over in, in USD, converted to USD and sent over to the Omniverse. So in this particular case, we can see that, for example, the contour only has a surface because it's just a mesh. 
So I see here on the representation that it says surface. Uh, so you get this contour one surface on the kit side. It's just a combination of these two names. And um, I highlight that because if you want to, for example, say, hey, I want to see this data source in the first place, but I want to have a volume visualization of that, which you could do in, uh, in Paraview. Now it's having a volume visualization uh, on top of the, the contour surface that's inside there. Then, of course, in, um, in Create, you won't see anything right now, but if you go to the volume subdirectory of this scene, you would see that the VDB is created there. So you can see that actually the, the VDB information is there. And if, have, if you have like an application like Houdini, uh, which I still have to try out, but um, potentially it's then possible to use Houdini to just load this VDB itself and try to play around with that. So it's a capability that some of the Paraview users have been asking for. And um, we can at least provide the raw data right now. And this VDB is also integrated within the full scene USD file. So whenever we have the capability to visualize volume data as well as surface data within create this should work. Um, yeah, so I'll just turn off live sync for a second. And this is not everything because what um, uh, happens most in the simulation is that you don't have just one uh, sample of your data, you have a simulation moving forward in time. So you have for your different time steps, you have uh, different samples of your data. And I'll just load a data set like that real quick right here. And this is already a, a, a small compute graph that's been built where on the right side you can see uh, that Paraview has now loaded uh, half of a can with a block that's going to crush it like this. So I play this animation and uh, you can see like um, what it visualizes right now on the surface, the velocity of, of, of this can as, it be, as it's being crushed. Um, but you can, in this case, actually select velocity, displacement, acceleration, and then use that to color the surface of, of that particular can. So that's kind of like how a user would, would operate within Paraview. And now if we open the Omniverse connector again, I will get a new session. So this old session uh, stays the way it was, just creates a new session uh, 17. And uh, if I wanna visualize this particular scene, I just ask for the velocity to color the surface. And you can see it by the time bar, oh no, all the time sets are already there because I run through it before, but you run through this on the Paraview side and each time it encounters a new time sample, it will actually add it to the collection here on the create side within USD. And then the idea is that you can also move in the same way through this time data set on the create side. And uh, this is the kind of thing that a user will mostly be doing, creating these kind of animated time sets and then being able to color that in a, in a particular way or animate that or um, to do something with that in general. What I've shown before is that you have all these different arrays that come with the mesh data. So you don't have just have your vertices and normals and texture coordinates, but you also have these very generic like um, displacement, acceleration arrays, uh, in this case velocity and a bunch of other arrays that are either per vertex or per triangle. And often uh, what uh, scientists want to do is have that data transported with your mesh. So uh, if you just transport all the data over to Omniverse without asking them, it's going to take forever. So there are certain filters within uh, the, for the Paraview connector that have their own category here that uh, allow you to specify which arrays you want to have passed on to uh, yeah to your USD file. So if I go in here to the temporal shift scale actor, then at this point, if you go to the primvars, you won't see any velocity primvars. You will only see it when I add it with this particular filter. Now it's going to transfer the data time steps from this data set to the Omniverse side and a new session will be created for that. 
right here. And if I load it, right there, and all the time steps are present. But what is now also there, if you look at the connector pass arrays actor, that within the mesh, you can somehow scroll to that. Wait, I'm not in the mesh yet. Here it is. That the velocity ray is there. Um, right, it's here. So here you now you see in the primvars there's this velocity array. And the idea is that you can use this then to give uh, to change properties within your material, let's say the inputs to your material. If you want to color uh, the mesh based on this or have opacity or any kind of property of your material changed because uh, based on this uh, velocity array, then that would be a possibility because that, that primvars uh, velocity data is, is right there. So that's what basically this, uh, this particular filter uh, does. And yeah, I mean, now I'm really much over time, but there is then also the question of which arrays would you like to have a different copy of for each time step and which arrays are staying constant over all the time steps. So that would, there is a different uh, filter for that, which is harder to show. So I'll just try to explain this very quickly. That for example, if uh, your texture coordinates array, you know that the texture coordinates are not going to change. Or maybe you have a static geometry and only your texture coordinates change. They can just uh, enable or disable this particular array and there will be only co one copy present on the, in the USD side instead of a new copy of the data for every time step. So there are certain uh, abilities to, uh, to optimize uh, what data you're sending over from the Fairview side to the to the omniverse side.